If you've watched any of my videos, you'll have probably noticed one particular four-letter abbreviation. ETCS, 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 ETCS. I've realized that in almost every video I make some reference to a magical silver bullet called ETCS, but I've never done a proper job of explaining it. By the end of this video, you will be an expert at signalling, and hopefully you'll appreciate my pain regarding the current state of the so-called digital signalling project in New South Wales. ETCS, short for the European Train Control System, is the signalling component of the broader European Rail Traffic Management System, or ERTMS which sets out to provide a single set of technologies for use in the entire European Union, solving the problem created by the many incompatible national train control systems in Europe. ERTMS is managed by the European Union Agency for Railways. The goal of ETCS is to provide a safe and reliable signalling system capable of being overlaid onto existing national systems or being installed as the sole system. It really is a jack of all trades in the signalling ecosystem, being able to provide high density signalling with over 24 trains per hour, as well as high speed signalling at speeds up to 500 kilometres per hour. This versatility has made it a very popular system around the world. It is also effectively an open source system by nature of its goal of cross compatibility. For example, a train fitted with Alstom's ETCS products can work perfectly well on lines fitted with Siemens ETCS equipment. This allows a competitive tender process where multiple companies compete to offer the best deal and in theory makes installation cheaper. ETCS is often described with a particular level. This corresponds to the extent to which the system controls the signalling. Level NTC is where a train has ETCS equipment integrated with the equipment of other national systems, allowing information from those systems to be displayed on the ETCS driver machine interface screen. Examples include TVM430 signalling on French TGV Euroduplexes and AWS on British Class 700s. New South Wales does not currently have an existing form of cab signalling, so this function will never be used in New South Wales. Level 0 is where a fitted train travels on unfitted track. ETCS will only supervise the maximum permitted speed of the train, even if line speed is much lower. Level 1 full supervision is where ETCS is used only as an overlay to an existing signalling system. Euro Belizes, or beacons on the track, are connected to the existing signalling system and convey information to the train about the state of the line, including where the next red signal is, in ERTMS terminology where the movement authority ends, and the line speed. This has the benefit of continuous train protection, that is, ensuring trains don't speed or exceed their movement authorities however, does not address equipment reliability of the existing signalling or increase line capacity. It can, however, be used to increase line speed, which I'll quickly explain. One of the constraints on line speed in busy areas is the braking distance of trains. Currently, drivers get their first warning when they approach a signal not displaying clear, that is, a signal displaying anything other than double green or single green outside Sydney. If you want to learn more about the current signalling aspects, watch my New South Wales colour light signalling video in the top right. In some cases, there is not enough space between that signal and the signal at stop for trains to decelerate from the theoretical maximum geometric speed of the line. Thus, an artificial limit must be imposed to allow trains to stop in time. This is one of the reasons why a blanket 115 km per hour speed limit exists almost everywhere in Sydney. ETCS Level 1 Full Supervision provides a planning area to the driver on the DMI, with in some cases an 8km look ahead, 
plenty more than even the heaviest freight trains need to stop. These planning areas can also convey information about changes in line speed, gradient, neutral sections, level crossings, and in some cases, stations or landmarks. When the train needs to begin slowing, additional warning is given to the driver on the speedometer itself. A speed hook runs around the outside of the speedo, showing the maximum permitted speed in that section. When approaching a speed reduction, the system beeps at the driver twice. Then the speed hook turns yellow as far as the next target speed, or zero if the train is approaching its end of authority. The hook gradually slides around the outside of the speedo, at a rate calculated to be within the abilities of the train's service or normal brake, giving the driver adequate time to decelerate from a speed of up to 500 km an hour regardless of the signals outside. Username WillyWoo in my Discord server requested that I use the overspeed alarm somewhere in the video, so this is what a driver hears when they speed under ETCS control. By the way, you should join my Discord server, link in the description. Level 1 can be used in an even cheaper setup, one where only speeds and a select few important junctions are monitored not signals. This obviously loses the benefits of the elimination of signal braking distance and emergency brake trips when signals are passed at danger, and as ETCS onboard computers don't receive enough information about the line in this case, they do not display a speed hook or a planning area, as there are many cases where the ETCS supervised speed is much higher than the actual safe travelling speed. Level 1 limited supervision is used in New South Wales, justified by the use of Tripcock train stops for SPAD, signal passed at danger, prevention. Tripcocks, however, were never designed for use on main lines, and the faster they can be replaced en masse, the better. They are only rated for speeds of 145 km per hour, slower than the DSET's maximum of 160. The train stops themselves also require lots of line-side pipes, as they operate on compressed air. The other problem with tripcocks is they only work at the time of a SPAD. They have no way of providing proactive speed management like ETCS full supervision does. To ensure trains that have SPADded don't crash into trains in the next signalling block section, generally an entire block is kept clear behind trains. For this reason, a complex system called Moorgate Control is used in busy areas to allow trains into this empty block to increase headway, where data pickup units measure the frequency of impulses in rails to determine the speed of oncoming trains. If train speeds are below the calculated release speed, an intermediate train stop will be lowered. Many of these train stops will be positioned along a platform with decreasing release speeds. Moorgate control is also used at some terminus roads. The system was invented by the London Underground following the Moorgate disaster, where a train ran at line speed into a dead-end tunnel wall, killing 43 people. It is frustrating that full supervision is not used, as many areas within Sydney could have speed limits increased, and with some changes to rules, ETCS fitted trains could safely run in the block normally kept clear, reducing the headway. Level 2 is where ETCS becomes the signalling system in its own right. Line-side signals and signs are generally removed as they are made redundant. Normally, track circuits are replaced with axle counters for train detection. Track circuits work by feeding current to one rail then watching to see if a short circuit is detected by a train wheel set in that section. Axle counters work by counting axles using electromagnets, funnily enough. This train detection information is sent to a new traffic management system, which links the systems of ETCS to the signalling panels. In Sydney's case, Sydney Trains intends to continue using its in-house Atrix signalling system to control the ETCS Level 2 territory. This traffic management system determines ETCS movement authorities based on routes made by Atrix signalers, and transmits these to radio block centres. 
These are in turn connected to radio masts, which, using the GSMR radio bands, transmit movement authorities and other instructions to trains wirelessly. Sydney trains already use a non-standard GSMR configuration, which has been designed to be compatible with ETCS transmissions. I say non-standard, as the radio bands are different to those specified by the European Union, but that's unlikely to matter for at least the next few years, as we don't currently have any direct rail connections to Europe. These instructions are displayed to the driver on the driver machine interface, the screen. As all the information comes from the radio block centre and the traffic management system, the old colour light signalling can be removed entirely. The Eurobelizers too serve a different purpose. Whilst train detection is still fixed block, with the blocks marked by creatively named block markers, the trains still need to accurately determine their location so they know where they are within their own movement authority. This can be done continuously by monitoring wheel rotations and by using radar to scan the ground. But these methods aren't completely accurate, and the position estimate eventually reaches unacceptable levels of error. To correct these broad estimates of position, Euro Belizes are placed at locations known to the trains, so that when a train passes over them, they can zero their location error, just as you might zero kitchen scales. The Euro Belizes in level 2 are unpowered. When trains pass over them, the energy from the train's onboard antenna is just enough to wirelessly power the Euro Belize to return a signal, only telling the train its location. As the trains know the location of the Belizes, they can detect when they have missed one. If they miss two consecutively, an emergency brake application is made. ETCS Level 2 is currently being tested between Cronulla and Sutherland, and is planned to be commissioned on that section and between Erskineville and Bondi Junction by the end of the year, although that seems unlikely. ETCS Level 2 is the current gold standard of interoperable railway signalling anywhere in the world. It has many variants and is used everywhere, including in Australia. Rio Tinto's driverless iron ore trains use a modified version of ETCS Level 2. Brisbane's Cross River Rail is due to be delivered with ETCS Level 2 with automatic train operation, just as used in the Thameslink core in London. This requires additional features like Euro Belizes within stations to accurately align with platforms or even platform screen doors, and a way for trains to know their timetable, as well as a new ATO computer. Sydney Trains plans to implement ETCS Level 2 with ATO in three tranches. Tranche 1, notionally intended for revenue use this year, covers the aforementioned sections between Sutherland and Cronulla, and between Erskineville and Bondi Junction. This project has taken so long because the trains used, the Tangaras, must be retrofitted with ETCS, including a whole new driver's desk. This refurbishment itself took an enormous amount of time. In 2027, allegedly, the North Shore Line, I think as far as North Sydney, the City Circle, and the Flying Junctions south of Central will be commissioned, and sometime after that, Tranche 3 will include all remaining sections not shared with freight trains, including the Airport, East Hills, Inner West, and Richmond Lines. ETCS Level 2 with ATO, by removing the block after trains and allowing trains to break as late as possible, can bring about frequencies of 24 trains per hour in Sydney, with up to 30 trains per hour for delay recovery. The current colour light signalling can only handle 20 trains per hour. Level 3 is not currently used anywhere in the world, but is planned to be a moving block variant of Level 2, where block sections are dispensed of and movement authorities are calculated continuously using the precise location of all trains where the trains have onboard integrity monitoring to ensure an unplanned uncoupling is detected and accounted for. This system will use the train location data from Euro Belizes, axle revs and radar to locate trains, just as used on CBTC systems around the world, including on Sydney Metro. In fact, Level 3 is effectively just an open source moving block CBTC product. It's also possible Level 3 will be available as a hybrid with Level 2, 
allowing trains without that integrity monitoring to travel in fixed blocks with fallback train detection provided by axle counters, just as in level 2. Personally, I believe all other lines should be fitted with at least ETCS level 1 full supervision, with train stops removed entirely, so that fitted trains can travel at over 130 km per hour, where geometry allows, and if overheads are upgraded, and unfitted trains are kept at other speedboards. Once the K and V sets are retired, only the Tangaras will use blue speedboards, but they will have ETCS. Blue speedboards could thus be removed. Yes, I know all suburban drivers use blue at the moment, but this is to prevent them from memorising two different speeds. If we get rid of blue, they still only need to know one colour. With a new speedboard colour, possibly green, introduced, such that yellow was for general traffic including Tangaras without ETCS operative, white for fourth generation trains without ETCS operative, and green for all trains with ETCS operative. ETCS always supervises the maximum speed of the specific train, so that won't be exceeded ever. The current distinguishing factor between blue and white boards are the braking ability of trains, but if trains had ETCS as discussed above, this would no longer be an issue. Using this system, green speed boards of 160 km per hour could be introduced in many areas within Sydney, such as Reevesby to Glenfield, Glenfield to MacArthur, Sutherland to Waterfall, the Rawl to Wollongong, Strathfield to Meadowbank, okay, you get the point, anywhere with straight track. I'll finish on the subject of freight. Transport for New South Wales has asked providers to evaluate the feasibility of a cross-compatible connection between the ARTC's Advanced Train Management System, or ATMS, and ETCS. ATMS has been developed by Lockheed Martin, of all companies, to replace train order working, where movement authorities are given by signalers over radio and written down by drivers on a special form, and other systems of safe working, like digital train orders via ICE radio, on principally the Trans-Australian Railway from Adelaide to Kalgoorlie, and the future inland rail from Melbourne to Brisbane via parks. It works by using GPS positioning to locate trains, obviously considering the inaccuracies giving them wide tolerances but nevertheless allowing continuous train protection. It also allows trains to travel in the same direction on the same single line, drastically increasing capacity. To avoid requiring the installation of ETCS on freight locomotives that already have ATMS, precisely the situation ETCS was developed to solve, Transport wishes to figure out a way of getting the ETCS traffic management system to transmit to the ATMS traffic management system, which would convert the ETCS movement authority to an ATMS one, before using the ATMS transmission system to transmit that to the locomotive. Obviously, it wouldn't be as seamless as ETCS, but would allow freight trains with ATMS to travel on lines fitted with ETCS level 2, therefore allowing signals to be removed from the entire metropolitan network. It would also provide train protection to freight trains, which currently have none as they are not fitted with tripcocks. As mentioned above, an adequate stopgap would be the use of full supervision level 1 on these corridors. I hope you've learnt something from this video. I appreciate that it was very technical. If you like that sort of thing, then I hope you enjoyed it, and if you don't, then I'm sorry for probably confusing you more. I'll answer questions in the comments below. With thanks to my channel members for their ongoing support, and thanks to you for watching.